Arsenal have been really good this season despite what a lot of people think or they may make us seem like we aren't quite as good as last season. We currently sit at third in the league table just two points off leaders in Man City. We lead our Champions League group and look destined to qualify for the round of 16. Our defense has been really solid in the Premier League especially but despite our solid start just based off the eye test it's quite clear that Arsenal needs some reinforcements in the January window to help us through the home stretch of the season. But how should Arsenal approach this January transfer window? Who are some players that we should look at and what are some areas that Arsenal should be looking at to strengthen, especially with the fact and the rumors that the board will be helping Arsenal and pushing Arsenal in the January transfer window? with some decent budgets. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving my three potential targets that I would like to see Arsenal get in the window. Now, I know Arsenal won't buy all three of these players, but it's just my list of who I would like to see in Arsenal colors when January is over. Also, this list is not in any order and I've made this list basing it off realism and players that either want to leave their club or have been linked to Arsenal in the last six months or so. So although I would love to go out and get Erling Haaland, it's just not realistic. So please be sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So the first one is a person I've made a video about already. It's Ivan Tony. I know a lot of people aren't as high on Ivan Tony as I might be. And with his gambling issue, keeping him out of action this whole season and him not being that young at 27 years old in football terms, of course. And with the fact that a lot of his goals have come from penalties for a lowly Brentford, I understand it. But I still think he would be a monster sign for Arsenal despite the obvious risk. Now, I have already made a video on why I think Ivan Tony would be a really good signing for Arsenal, so be sure to check that out after this video. But essentially, I think the fit is perfect. With Jesus always out injured and Nketiah having his struggles, we need a 20 plus goals a season striker and Ivan Tony is just that. He's tall, he's strong, he has good movements. I really, really think that Ivan Tony will fit into this Arsenal team a treat. But of course, if you wanna hear more about it, go check out the video. Second is Douglas Luiz. Now, out of all midfield links, I really think Douglas Luiz is the better out of all the realistic options that we have. I know a lot of people are high on Ruben Neves and I understand it, but as good as a player Ruben undoubtedly is, I think what Douglas Luiz can bring mixed in with his youth and injury record and the firm ironness I, I suppose is the word that he would bring to our midfield at the sixth position would be invaluable. Douglas Luiz is a player that loves doing the dirty work for a team and he excels at that but unlike a lot of players that are the best when they are playing that kind of enforcer role the one thing I love about Douglas Luiz is he's not only just good at that, but as a technical footballer, he is a beautiful watch. I mean, he has a really good technical side to his game. He's good in possession, takes corners at times for Villa, and overall, on the ball is an enjoyable footballer to watch, and he is so efficient. I think he would be an absolute perfect fit alongside Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard in the midfield. I always say that I think Declan's best position is when he's playing more of a box-to-box -box role as opposed to a holding six. And if we get Douglas Luiz, that will then allow Declan to be in his best position. I think the midfield of Declan Rice, Douglas Luiz, and Martin Odegaard could work really well. You will have Douglas Luiz being aggressive and winning loose balls in front of the defense, Declan running up and down the pitch and being a monster while doing it, and then Martin Odegaard in the 10 doing things that only Martin seems to be able to do. And outside of how he is on the pitch, it's Douglas Luiz's injury record that is also such a huge plus for me. The best ability in football and even sports in general is availability. Douglas Luiz has not been injured since the 18-19 season and he has only missed, get this, a total of seven games in his whole career through injury. And I mean, we have been linked to him for a long time now and it's really understandable as to why that is. Honestly, him and Ivan Tony are probably at the top of my shopping list for Arsenal in January, but I think I'm edging it towards Douglas Luiz. I know we need a striker, but what Douglas Luiz could bring to this club, to this midfield, again, could be invaluable. That midfield, just imagine it. Douglas Luiz, Declan Rice, Martin Odegaard, then you have Havertz off the bench, Smith Rowe off the bench. That midfield 
would be brutal for other teams to cope with. And like I said, that injury thing is a huge plus. If Partey wasn't as injury prone, we probably wouldn't even need to look at a midfielder. But I think the fact that Partey is probably going to be leaving in January, he's so injury prone. I think Douglas Luiz is a perfect fit. And again, I understand people wanting Ruben Neves over Douglas Luiz, but I just think Douglas Luiz has been proving it at a high level for so long, and I just think the fit would be absolutely perfect. Now onto the third and final player that I think Arsenal should look at getting in January is Gerald Hatto from Ajax. Now I know this one may be a little bit out there, and I've heard some rumors here and there, but not many to believe that Arsenal are actually interested in getting the 17-year-old defender from Ajax, but I still think it would be an amazing and sign in now let me just say he is linked to several clubs around europe so i know logically that it's unlikely that he will ever come play for arsenal also with the fact that he is so desired that if ajax were to sell the price tag may be a little bit hefty for what essentially is a project player that can prove to be somewhat of a solid backup right now. But there are several reasons that I think he would be an amazing player for us. First of all, the obvious one, he is young and a project player. He's not gonna come in and replace Saliba and Gabriel anytime soon, but I think that's a positive. Those two as center back have been immense and we don't need to replace either one of them. All we need is a good competent backup. Now Hato, a lot like Timber, has a good diversity to his game. You know, he's left footed and six foot. So yes, he may be on the smaller side of center backs, but he can equally put in a really good shift at left back, which again is something I love, especially for a backup to be diverse and be able to play multiple positions. Hato is very calm and comfortable on the ball. And I must admit, I haven't watched too much much Ajax maybe three or four games but when I have watched him he's looked really good and obviously outside the compilations I think he's a solid player I just think he would be a perfect player to just provide some depth to the defensive line allowing us to rest Gabriel and Saliba a tad bit more he's 17 so he could act as almost an understudy to Saliba and Gabriel and maybe even Yuri and Timber when Timber's fit like I said I know this may be a tad bit out of the realism realm but I really like the idea of signing a 17 year old that has a calmness and maturity about him that you don't often get in players his age he would provide a much needed depth to that defensive line already the defensive line is somewhat depleted so it'd be very crucial for us to get him in and he would be young enough for Arteta to mold into the player he wants almost a lot like Saka and Martinelli were molded also with the fact that Ajax are doing so badly I think Ajax would probably be willing to sell in order to raise some money to fix the issues that they have at this current moment in time. But yeah, guys, those are my top three targets I would want Arsenal to pursue in January. Again, I know Arsenal probably won't get all, if any of them, but in a perfect world, these are the players that I would want Arsenal to pursue. Be sure to let me know in the comments who you would want Arsenal to go out and get in January. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.